Hello everyone, welcome back to Multi Channel on YouTube. In this video, we're gonna be showing how you uh, cut and how to roll, um, uh, like if you try to paint any type of walls, uh, especially the drywall. So we talked about the type of paint and stuff like that. We're just gonna mention a few uh, tips and tricks about uh, the paint. So after you choose the paint, and we said like the paint, we mentioned in the previous video, uh, the, uh, all the paint has to be water base and the water base is easy to clean if you got on your hand on the floor anywhere it's easy to clean with water and that's why it's water base the oil base is not recommended to use in the, in the houses because it smell bad it, it took long time to dry and also uh, it, it is not washable it's not washable with water so you need to use uh, like a paint thinner gas or brake cleaner to clean the oil base it's also used for industrial other uh, than uh, the, like not uh, home use or office so the paint uh, this we choose a semi glass as you see here um, this one it is a semi glass as it's called like semi brilliant and you can the it's recommended to use semi glass here so well that's water, white uh, water base and this one is good for walls and ceiling but uh, of course i mean it's good uh, for the walls you need to use a bedroom wall living room or uh, it's best to use eggshell instead of semi glass but uh, we it's up to you everyone has a different uh, view different uh, way he wants to uh, wants to paint the walls with either semi glass or eggshell satin or glass high glass and so on but uh, the main thing is all the paint it's water base so uh, the water base as we mentioned is easy to clean all you need is just a rag with a little bit of water and if you drop anything on the floor it's, it's easy to clean it if you drop something on uh, cloth uh, or blankets or anything like that it's better to wash it right away with warm water uh, and if you care about the floor just like dropping on the floor while you paint the wall you can uh, apply a drop sheet on the floor to prevent any dropping or kind of messing with the floor but I'm not caring about this floor it's old and I'm professional so I'm not dropping a lot of paint I've done this about 25 years and I'm really comfortable with using any type of paint now before we do painting of course there's like a trims the baseboards some baseboards up to four inch six inch two inch and so on those are like about inch and a half or inch and a quarter so what uh, the question is what is the first is to paint um, the walls before the trim or the baseboards or paint the baseboards before the trim those are depends on the first of all the, th the high or the thickness of the baseboards if the baseboards are too thick and you know very nice profiles and shape and everything it's better to paint um, the walls first then paint the baseboards and uh, so yeah some painters prefer to paint the baseboards first then apply tape because when once you uh, uh, start painting the walls the small kind of drips it'll kind of um it, it'll get on the baseboards after you paint them and uh, that's not good so the, the baseboards of course they're always like most standard color which is the white semi-glass or glass and the walls of course uh, any type of paint now um, how many coats we need to do repaint repaint it depends on the color you choose if you choose darker color uh, and you have a previous light paint on your wall you need to do uh, like multi multiple coats two or three coats it depends on the color you choose the color light light color and you have a previous uh, kind of a darker color also you're gonna have to end up with multiple coats but between like not too dark not too light most time most of the time good to two good coats it should cover everything and in the previous video also we made, we talked about the the like uh, <clears throat> applying you see here applying some uh, fill up the holes cracks damage everything else and to sand it you have to go very easy very light just like that see you don't need to spend much time sanding very quickly just like that see that 
and it's done. Very quick. A sponge, this is a sponge uh, sander. It's really good for doing like uh, any type of job. And uh, you can use a uh, regular sandpaper with sand block. But this one, it's most used and I like it so much. Here, same thing, see that? Okay, and so on. If you find something, sometimes something is sticking, like in the small nails, like this one, you see, all you need to do, just hammer it a little bit, or you can pull it, you know, it doesn't matter. Hammer it a little bit, and it's gone, see that? When you paint it, it'll disappear. Or you can apply a little bit uh, filler, uh, wall filler or mud, and then, you know, and of course, so before you trying to do the paint on the wall, it's very recommended to do cutting first. You see, all the way on a, like a ceiling and wall, corners, because the wall roller cannot reach all the way here, or the door, um, door trim or door jam, door casing also, all this, this one has to be removed, but I'm not worried about it because we're gonna have to replace this. It's also better to remove it so you can paint around it inside the cover too and the uh, cuttings you know everything is removable easy to remove it um, the rod cotton rods may be better to keep it if it's hard to remove just cut around it and so on window casing also cut uh, use the brush cut first and then uh, and then uh, uh, use the roller and the brush I'm using here is two and a half inch it is two and a half inch uh, most painters use this very easy and very comfortable to work with so the trick as you see here the angle and you always go with the angle like that you see that so the brush um, we'll do the cutting right away we start cutting everywhere but I'm just showing you a quick demonstration how to hold the brush so some painters maybe hold it like that like that you know wherever it's convenient to hold the brush with. Um, usually I hold it like this, like a pencil. You see that? So it's easy to control it because you see that? And uh, once you do cutting, you see this uh, edge of the of the brush, it must be reaching to the, like that. You see that? And go like that, and then like that. So that's how you hold the brush to feel comfortable, even in the ceiling, see that? Just like that so you don't need to press too hard and before you do the um, any the paint this paint if it's fresh paint it's already shaked you can open it and use it right away but if the paint been sitting for a very long time you need to shake it before you paint it's very important because this paint it's mixed with um, of course a lot of water almost 70 percent maybe or so with like a formula and mix with acrylic um, paint and so on. So you need to shake it. You can shake it by just like that, you know, whatever is convenient. Or you can use um, this, uh, any kind of a stick and shake it. So, and uh, so usually cutting, when you cut, before you do the, the paint, See this uh, paint, the paint also comes in different qualities, like uh, some paint so expensive, about almost $70 a gallon, some paint is cheap, like uh, this is the cheapest one we bought, this, um, yeah, so um, the, the white paint is like a different prices, it, it, it's, it's a factory, uh, as a manufacturer, they, they use a 100% acrylic, washable, it covers really good and it is not, has not uh, like a lot of smell uh, friendly environment which is of course very expensive the Glidden uh, company they use a uh, very cheap paint but also they have a different quality which is very expensive paint too up to 50 or 60 dollars uh, this one is about 20 dollars so you can see here if you see the the, the paint is not mixed simply by doing like mixing it you need to mix it really good before you start the paint if the paint has been sitting a uh, very long time so this paint is already been mixed been sitting here about a few days so it's okay see that
I don't have a, a small pocket to use so for the cutting. What I'm gonna do, I'll simply make sure the tray is clean and uh, I'll leave about this much, see? This much on the gallon for cutting. And uh, yeah, and this paint, once I do the cutting, the pa don't worry, the paint won't dry quickly. It takes long, few hours to dry. But uh, mm -hmm. there will be cover if you want to go for a break or so on. You can just cover this. I will stay here for even a few days, no problem. And uh, so right now, this is ready. I'm just going to clean this a little bit. Also, it's best to use a rag. You can also soak the roller, soak it really good, make it soaked with paint. See that? See, I'm, I'm basically rolling it just like that. So it can be soaked ready uh, for paint. Well, as soon as I'm done cutting, I'll start using, uh, doing the roller right away. See that? So, I'll leave this now for now. I'll, I'll go for the cutting. So, I'll start with the ceiling first. So you see this is the, the trick is, see that when you, when you uh, dip the brush on the paint, you need to do like that, one, two, and then flip. See? So it won't, it won't drip. See that? Now the roller, uh, the brush is full with paint. And uh, same thing again when you when you do like that, fill it, and then see that one two, flip it. One two, flip it. I'll start do the ceiling. So see that, go all the way, and then. and then go back again to smooth it kind of a little bit okay so every time you do painting it's very important to, to watch for the temperature and of course for the uh, for, for uh, air, air, side, air like circulation if you want to do one type of cutting as you see this paint, it's a little kind of a little darker. This is just white. So we might have to do um, two, type, two, two times of cutting, but uh, uh, you need to keep the little bit heat on with, uh, with uh, like a little bit air circulation. So the paint won't kind of dripping. And if you find something like uh, sticking on the wall, tape, anything like that, just uh, use a scraper and scrape it, get, get rid of it or something like that, okay?
Yeah, with my appetite 